Hi there again, and welcome back to this series of video tutorials where we, we show you how to deal with over, over meshes and up and fun and fluid. So in this tutorial, we're going to set up uh, a 3D case, really body motion. So pretty much what we're going to do is this, what you're seeing here, just let me hide the plane sun, and see that we have two solutions here so this one will be fluent open fun we're going to set up both cases really volume motion with our set meshes as you see we have similar behaviors some differences discretization different techniques to solve but pretty much we follow the same behavior so we're going to learn how to do this setup so this will be the final tutorial in our set so we're going to do it open from Fluent, so you will see that this is the initial setup in Fluent, so we have the initialization, so you have free surface, then you have this initialization initialization to perturb the water, so we're going to see how to do everything here, we know how, how, how to work with uh, <coughs> our set matches, so this will be the new part, and in open form, pretty much is the same setup so that we have the same initialization, the body, we are going to define the all the body properties and then we're going to run using the overset solver. So in the description, in the link, you will find two links there to download the case, the open form case and the fluent case. So first let, let's work with the uh, Open with the open phone case. So let me go. So you will have this data structure. So let me erase this one. I already run this case. So as usual, you have the directory servers organized. So what we're going to do is merge floating body into background. Everything will be set up here. So to do the meshing, you have this script. If you want to run the solver after this one and to run everything in one shot, just use this script. So what is important here, I'm not going to, to, to talk about how to do the mission, we already know that, just to show how to set up the case. Okay, so let me go to do the mesh. We will do everything automatically. As you go into background, everything will be assembled here. So the important thing is you go into constant, <coughs> Polymesh boundary file. See that the first patch is the overset one. So already deal with that one to have the recommendation from, from the developers that should be the first one. Okay, so we mentioned that in the first video. So now let's see how to set up everything. So remember the in this case <coughs> we have free surface. So we set gravity. <coughs> Then transport properties, we set all the working fluids properties, so water, air, set up everything. Okay, so probably this one should be 007, should be better as you put that one. And turbulence properties, we're going to use the KX model. Okay, as you see, pretty much everything is standard. And remember, in the dynamic mesh dictionary, we set up everything regarding kinematics uh, and really body motion. So, this is very standard. We're using the overset solvers. Remember, it's version of Infant 1812. We're going to use this solver. So, when it comes to readable emotion, there are two solvers. In this case, this is okay. The other one will do the same, but it's a little bit more uh, com complete because it would let you interact with multiple bodies. This one is single body. So, as you, we use this solver, then the coefficients, and then we start to define everything here you can imagine the, 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 the properties of the body. So, patches, this is just one floating object. In the geometry, this is the name we gave it. Then remember, as you don't know this, but inner, outer, distance. This has to see when you are dealing with morphine meshes. Okay, in this case we are not dealing with morphine meshes, so you put a large value, something that is outside the, of the domain. Okay, then we define the center of mass, mass, initial position, and then starting from that, the solver will keep tracking of everything. We give mass, we give inertia, okay, so these are the physical properties, exactly the same. Remember these values, we're going to use these values also in, in Fluent. This is commented, so this is another way to do that definition. Then report on means that it will show you uh, the information, linear velocities, angular velocity, everything in the screen. And these are some parameters just to for the solver, for the 
uh, really body motion. Remember, you are solving the rear stokes, but also additional to that, you are solving the equation of motion, you do all there. So you are solving that ODE, so these are relaxation parameters too for that for, for those equations. So usually this is just standard values that you can put here. So relaxation will be equivalent to the relaxation factor. This is a damping to avoid a strong uh, fluctuation in forces. So this is a little bit dangerous. It's a good idea to leave it one, in this case 0 0.9 would fine. But later on probably we can go into details and explain explain what 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 what, what is doing this one. Then the solver for the equations motion. So you have different actions. If I were to call you you will have three actions. And then constraints. So your motion is you don't put anything would be it would move uh, in six degrees, okay, all it will move in every direction and will rotate in a, along every axis. And as you put constraints like this, you start to say, for instance, if you do this one, you are fixing uh, and on one point or in one line or one plane or in one plane, okay. So you have many actions to do that one. So this is the setup you do as you see, you, you do as you, as you see is relatively easy, nothing changed, and then. Let's move to zero folder, initial conditions, boundary conditions. So this is very standard, as you see, overset measures, uh, readable motion, you define K, omega, epsilon, node, in the same standard way, also alpha, you initialize that one. But I just want to pay attention, I want you to pay attention to U and point displacement, okay? So go to U and remember, always the body that is moving needs to be moving wall velocity, so be careful. If you don't put this one, you put fixed value, it will run, but maybe it's like a problem that you, will, you won't get the right results because you are not adding that mesh velocity to your equation under the condition. So be careful. Always the bodies that are moving, put moving wall velocity. And then points displacement. So this is standard one, okay? Nothing changed. So as you see, the body that is moving, you put it calculated. So the solver will calculate that one and you, you 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 will have the information there and the rest of the patches overset patches okay so this is very standard the other one for instance you want to check check k you will see standard definition wall functions and then and the floating body nothing new okay so we have our properties our initial boundary conditions now let's go to system folder Again, okay, system folder. So let's go first with SV skins. So that was discretization. So it's a very standard one. Okay, it's a good one, a great, accurate one. So we're using this method for time derivative. You can also use a second order. Okay, we're using this method for gradients. Probably will be better to use slope limiters. That is up to you if you want to do it. There is no problem. And then to solve. Uh, the convective terms we're using this method. So now we have the free surface, you have the alpha methods, the turbulent variables. So this is our discretization. Then you move the Laplacian schemes, we use this method, and then we go to the end related to the uh, overset solver. So this is the overset interpolation method. We're using this one. So you have these three actions. So something that I want to say here that influent. The default one is least square here, we're using inverse distance, but also you have the option to use inverse distance and fluent, or you can put here least square as well. So this one I leave it to you for as an exercise just to test different methods, but pretty much you will get same similar results. Okay, and then some other entries. This one is not used anymore, so you can erase it. And this one is related to, to the explicit interpolation also. It's recommended when you are doing with multiphase to, to, to use this one. Okay, so now we move to SV solution. Very standard, so remember you are you have mesh displacement, so you use this one, this solver, you define this solver. Then for alpha, for P core, P, PRGH, Okay, so you define all your quantities, so the linear solvers, and here are the entries related to the pressure velocity coupling. Now they are using the, the so-called pimple. In this, in this case, as we are using just one other corrector, this is working in PISO, so this is PISO method. And we are using, remember, when you have overset measures, but also moving body, it's a good idea to do a few corrections, okay, to get better approximation. So, 
pretty much for me this is a standard 132 okay better is one you can increase this one to get better approximation and this one also i like to do at least one here but in this case i put two probably it's not necessary because the measures are really good but leave it to the it's not costly as you will see it, it converts fast and then you have the rest of the auctions here when you see d means the default value so we're just as uh reverting to all the default values probably remember it can be a a good idea to have this one here to get the information about the mesh current number okay so just put it there so before starting the pimple you will get that information and then you're on the relaxation factors that we are not under relaxants you put some values here then you are going to enter into pseudo transient mode so be careful that you might not capture the actual transient history uh, accurately okay and then we go to control dictionary so we have our standard definition so remember the lips here so remember the previous video where we, 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 when we were talking about compiling udf and fluent and then you need to load so probably that is equivalent to this one okay so you have a new library you compile and then you load that library that that was what we were doing in, in fluent loading a new udf a new library okay so we set this time step okay and i would like to set here a, not a used all time step this is also a, a good re recommendation remember multi-phase flows are multi-scale so there are different scales that are changing in time so it's not <clears throat> it's not a good idea to use a used all time step but also it's not a good idea in right control to use a used all runtime because that will introduce to save in the precise time step, it will introduce a variation in time step that can introduce oscillations in your solution. So sometimes I have seen that multiplied flows are very sensitive to, to that. So it's a good idea to have uh, a fixed time step. Okay, and then we have the typical uh, monitors. So this is the standard. So top as you see, nothing new. The only thing, as you saw, everything is done in the dynamic mesh dictionary that you can take it as a standard, as a, as a template. So this is the only values that you will give. Then to the add some relaxations to, to, to the solver. And then the constraints is you want to have constraints. As you see, it's relatively straightforward. So let's run a couple of time steps. So background. I will look, I would run here just in serial. Okay, in your case, you can run in parallel. You have this grid automatically. It will do everything in parallel. So remember now we're working uh, with volume fraction now, BOF method. So this is the solver that we're going to use over inter dim phone. Previously we were working with over pimple phone. So now over inter phone we have the free surface. We're working full in 3D. We're working also with uh, real body motion and turbulence model. Okay, so this is a very complete physics. And you send it and you start to run. As you see, you get a few messages at the beginning here. Okay, we, need, we have this warning, we need to, you need to update that one, you just can understand what is going on there. And see that you are computing, this is the report, the information about the report when you set in the dynamic mesh. So you have angular, linear, or velocity, center of mass position, okay, then the overset data here information, and then you have your convergence information here with no problem. Okay. So... Let me stop here. So we run just three time step. Let me launch the solver, the Parafon. And basically this is what is happening. So just let me see the body. You have the body there. And it's body falling. Okay, let me go zero. Okay, well, we need to, to run a few more time steps. But basically, the body is falling, will hit the free surface, and then you will have all that interaction. So basically, your solution will be something like this. This is what you have, the body falling. Okay. So this is our setup. You would run, probably will take about 15 minutes depends on the, on the computer number of processors. So running in four processors uh, in my computer in my portal it takes about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So now we have this case, nothing new. 
relatively straightforward. So now let's move to, to open phone, okay? To fluent. So open your fluent. Remember, you will need your fluent version as you have your institutional email at university. You can get the academic version. Otherwise, you will need a commercial one. If you don't have access, you just, just, just can you, you can cut, contact us and we can give you some affordable per prices just to lease or on demand license. Okay, so through our partner, technology partner, that in the description also you will have the link. So now let's uh, work in Fluent. So in the link, also in the description, in the link you have to allow the case. So let's read the measures. Okay, so discard everything okay so you will have these two meshes okay background and floating body so let's read first the background mesh so as you guess it's exactly the same setup that we have in open phone and actually we convert the open phone mesh into fluent and we're using the same meshes okay and then you append the second mesh will be the floating body, okay? Now we have the two meshes, there was some renaming down there, and let's see what we have here, okay? So I don't want to see faces, floating body, and then you have all the patches, okay? So see size size here will represent the overset patches, stationary walls, all these walls in the external box, the top one. And then you have the interior region. Interior one will be the background mesh. Okay. So let's see, background mesh. Okay. And then interior one one will be the around the floating body. That probably will be called fluid one. I don't recall how, how fluent changes the name, but as you see, fluent will do soon automatically. Renaming when reading the, the, the mesh if they have same name convention. Okay, so now that we have the meshes, okay, I want to see this, this, this. Uh, let's set up the case. Okay, so delete here. So this is our initial visualization. So remember here in OpenFund, you have this vertical approach, influence, sorry. You have this vertical approach. So you start to set up from top to bottom and you will, uh, when you arrive here, run calculation, everything is set up. So let's go general. So we're going to use the pressure-based transient solver. We enable gravity. Gravity, we have it in this direction. So if you're not sure, you can check your open some dictionary and how gravity was set here. So yeah, that is okay. So we have gravity. Now we go in models. Here we start to choose all the models we want to use. As you see, we have many models. Something really neat in this last version that also you have uh, uh, a full in place no structure as already within Fluent Unit. You need to Couple to call no answers mechanical to do fluid structure interaction. Everything is here is a, a strong monolithic approach in, in fluent. So let's do multi phase enable. I have ball on fluid, so the other one mixture related. Remember that disperse models. Okay, so I want to use implicit formulation, small rubbles. So probably this formulation will be equivalent as you go into open fund in SV solution. The equivalent to those options is this one here, mules. So mules, yes, you have the same implicit, uh, implicit and then mules, not. you will have the fully explicit uh, formulation. So maybe this will be the equivalent. If you are working with open channels, okay, like towing tanks and stuff like that, you can use these options. In this case, we don't have, we're not working with those. Type, okay, the interface modeling. So I want to have a chart, chart resolving, it's okay. And the, um, also this can be held in a shape better, uh, more stability. So let's choose that one and okay. So now we set up the multi-phase and see that now we here, you go here, you will have the phase. You need to choose 
primary and secondary phase. So remember that also something equivalent to that we have an open phone. So you go and transport properties, primary, secondary phase, and you give the properties. You do the same here. But before to assign it that the properties, we need to load the value. So that is done here in materials. So if you go into materials, we already have air, but if we want to have a new one, you go here, fluid, new, fluent database and just get the quantity we want water liquid copy we have it there okay and you see that you have now here water liquid and air fluid probably you can do this but I don't know what I have so probably when I copy that uh, but also if at one point you get lost in the files that you don't know, you will get the case file, the case file already set. Okay, so we have these two here. You can check values and everything as you want to check. So as you see, also we are going to have a slightly different values with with open phone. This is what we have in open phone. So there is one source of discrepancies that we can have in the solution. But as you see, we have we are going to have very similar. Uh, behaviors. So now let's go back here in multiphase and phases and see that we define primary phase. I want air and secondary phase. I will define water liquid. Okay. So here you saw the idea is that primary will be the lightest one and secondary will be the heaviest phase. Okay. But there is no problem because also later you can set you know, the interaction how you want that interaction. And then you want, you can access surface tension. In this case, we're not going to use it. We're not going to use it because in our set measures, this is a beta feature that you need to enable something else. It won't work. I don't want to go into details. So we have that enabled energy. We don't have energy, viscous, turbulence models. So we're going to use the KX standard formulation equivalent to the one in open fund. Then you have re radiation, heat exchanger, species, discrete phase, solidification, acoustic, structural, valerian. We didn't have anything of that here, but you can add it as well as you want. Okay, materials, we already said the materials. Cell sound auctions. Remember, this is equivalent also to the cell sounds in open fund. So here, the only thing that we need to do is operating conditions. So define your operating condition, pressure, okay your gravity, and this is also a good option to enable a specified operating density. And we're done here. Now we go to boundary conditions. So we're going to do the standard setup. Okay, so we have walls, floating object, stationary walls, those are okay. Outlet atmosphere, okay, that is okay also. No problem there. So as you see, Flynn also tries to do some guessing according to the names that you give to those patches. And this is the one that we need to, to change size. Okay, so this one needs to be a overset. Okay, remember that sizes is the right one, the inner one. So put there overset. The moment you put that one overset, you are enable the overset interfaces. So see that we have now our boundary conditions, outlet, overset and walls okay the default values are okay in this case you go into overset and now you need to create that interface so you give it a name i would call it like that so my background sounds i know fluid one it is the large mesh and fluid one one the one about the body the floating body create you have your interface and at this point you enable the overset model as well Okay, so remember to compute the, the, the cutting hole and everything, you will need to do an in initialization. So let me put here, if I would recall, these are the values that we're using in OpenFun. Initialize, and now you are computing your cutting holes. You go back here, okay, over, list. You get, you get the information. So the grid priorities you want to change it. You can change it in this case, we don't need it, but maybe it can be a good idea to do it or you can test that option to see what is happening. And see here, dynamic mesh as in open phone, this is where we set up everything. So first thing that we need to do, we enable dynamic mesh. So here you will have two options, okay? You can define a UDF or you can do it everything here in the graphical interface. So for this case, that is a simple setup. 
it is enough to do it in the UDF. But sometimes things are a little bit more tricky in the graphical user interface. Sometimes the things are a little bit tricky. You need to use a UDF. A UDF, I will show you how it's set up. It's very standard. You have it also in your files that you download. It's something like that. Okay, so remember that you have documentation. Go to the documentation and you will find this macro. And here you give it a name, properties of the of the of this macro, and then you access time, delta time, and everything. Okay, and here you see that you can define mass of the body, inertia of the body, and this is how you set the body to have six degrees of freedom. Okay, so these are all the constraints: translational and rotational. Okay, by default they are set to false, so if you don't put anything, it's false. But if you put true here, then you are fixing that value. So the body is not allowed to move in the x-axis. Okay. So this is how you do in the using the UDF. We already know, we saw in the previous video how to compile it. But in this case, we're going to use the graphical interface. So the first thing you do is options, enable, 6DOF, settings. Here we have the gravity. See this option here, write motion on history. This will write the history of the center of mass. Okay, so you give it a name. So I will call it motion txt so this is equivalent to the report auction in in the open for dictionary okay so change create and now we give it a name i would call it body okay the mass is three so see here that here using the graphical user interface you have two options or six degrees of freedom okay it will move in every direction and would rotate in every direction or you can have a translation along one axis or rotation along one axis okay so do you see this a little bit limited limited so sometimes you would like to have more more things so you will need to go into your udf also there are many options available in the udf so sometimes you you will need to add a velocity initial velocity that is done in the udf so here we define also the inertia so it's we will recall these were the values okay Zero one. So let's check here to see if I'm using the right values. Uh, will be yeah. It's okay. So you define everything here. Create. You have now your dynamics, your solver defined here. Okay. And now you need to assign this into the dynamic mesh zone. So now here you create one. Rigid body, you select the body, okay, and this pay attention to this step because it's very important. Floating object, I want to use these six DOF properties that we define. So you see that here you can access the UDF or the properties we define in the in the GUI. So body is the only option that we have. We need to give the center of gravity. So that one you check. I don't recall that one. So it's zero five zero five. Okay, zero six three. So let's go. You give the position here 05, 05, 063, and you have also another options here. So just go to the help and you will get the definition of what they are doing. So we created 6DOF on. I enabled the solver for, for the, this sun name. Okay, but what is important that we assign that to the body, but also remember that around this body, we have a mesh, okay? This is an overset mesh, and we need to assign this to that mesh, okay? The same uh, property. So that mesh, I know it is fluid one one, okay? The one about that body. Create, and we have it there. But, okay, you see, draw here, you draw the body that you are assigned, and then the fluid. Okay, you have everything around. But what is important here is that when you enable 6DOF, you're computing force and everything in this body and this region. But we don't want to compute that in this region. So you here, you need to select passive. Okay, put it passive. So in all the cells in, your, in that component mesh, you are not computing forces and anything at moments. You are just computing that here in the body. So this is a very important step here. Okay, so we have that one. Everything is set up. 
nothing to do here so here is one you can preview the motion so in open front you cannot preview because it's really body motion you need com to compute forces in open front you can preview preview that one but but it will use the gravity vector okay so it will be just a linear displacement using the gravity ve vector so if you want you you want to check that motion you go here preview and well you see that the body will be moving okay and reset. Uh, and remember, as you go preview mesh motion, you will modify the motion. So you will need to save a backup file, otherwise, you are going to get a di totally different mesh. So, right case, let me write this case. What we have done. Okay, it's taking a little bit longer. I don't know why. Okay, so I will give it a name, I will call it test. So we have this solution here, everything has been set up, okay, then reference values, we are not going to put anything here, and then we go to method, okay, this, what is open from uh, fluent, we're proposing, it is okay, then controls, also this is okay, what is proposing, report definitions, okay, if you want to add new things, you can add it, so for instance, let me add a report definition for maximum CFL number. Okay, I want to compute in the whole domain. I would have access to that information here. I want to report uh, to a plot. And now you enable that functional object, uh, that report. Sorry, I'm just confusing sometimes with open phone. This is equivalent to the open phone uh, functional object. So you want to add one for pressure, velocity, just feel free to play there. Uh, then sell the registers, and this is important. So, so far, okay, let me go here. I will add a surface new plane, okay. And I will put it in, Zero, zero, okay, I want point in normal, okay, so I want a point zero five, okay, in the middle of the domain, and the normal will be this. Okay, plane seven, let me go here. Okay, plane seven, okay, so let me see here, new plane, so uh, point and normal, I want zero five, one zero, okay, it will be okay this one, okay, let me go back here, one eight. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, ta -ta -ta. Reset points. Okay. Uh, this is just to show you. For instance, at this point here, we can visualize uh, density. As you see here, we have air density all around. And so far, also we don't have faces. And. We don't have access to, 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 we haven't initialized faces. So this is another tricky part in Fluent. So to do the initialization, you go here, self registers, new, a new region. And see here that you have a few methods, you now A, X, sphere, cylinder. You can also program an initialization using name expression. But in this case, let's use X inside the box. So this is equivalent to the set fields using the box and you just give minimum and maximum values of the of that box. So here I recall the values. Okay. And this is here five three six eight. Save display. Okay. And see here that we're selecting this region of the domain and later we're going to initialize that one. I would like to create a second region, okay? So we have here region, a second one, and here I have the values, okay?
okay, so we have here that water column, the perturbation. So you have the two regions. So to use these two regions to initialize, you go here, initialization. You initialize first, uniform. And then you have here patch. And when you go to when you come here to patch, see that you have the option to mixture or phase two. We want to initialize phase two, which is the water. Remember that at the beginning we defined that water. Volume fraction, value one, means that you have water there, and you select the regions. We have these two regions, patch, and now we have initialized that. So if I come here, surface, new group, and I want to create isosurface. Okay, so I want isosurface, phase two, volume fraction, I want phase two in these two regions, and I want this value, okay? And now we can visualize also that region here, okay? I'm uh, floating that, okay. Not interior, floating that. So see that we have the initialization, the body here, and see here that you see the volume fraction. So air here, and water there. Okay, and as you want, you can visualize also, for instance, density value to see if we assign the right. So you go density, phase one, okay. Phase two, so you have all the values assigned. So see the mixture will be Air here, water here, okay? Then you have the body, you define all the properties, you have the water initialization, and at this point, you are ready to go. So now that we have this initialization, you can go calculation activities, just to automatically save the solution, everything, I will go into details. <clears throat> go into run calculation, choose a time step. So let's choose the same time step that is in open phone. And then you can go here and set up this option. So max iteration step, this is kind of a equivalent to the outer steps, okay, in open in open file. So that would be equivalent to increasing this uh, correctors, okay. And let's run five time step, okay. Calculate. And it will go. So remember, here will be a little bit more time consuming because here we're using the couple solver. So in theory, have to be a, a better solution, more stable. But this couple solver sometimes takes more time. And see that we're computing the maximum current in the domain. You have your residuals. You have as you see in your in open form when you are running, and each time step you are computing. Uh, the position of the center of mass of the body, everything's been computed, okay? So that information, you should have it here. So your motion body, this is the file where we're saving everything. So see, every tiny step, you get CGX, YZ, and also that, okay? Degrees, meters. So this is the displacement, and from this, you can get also velocities, linear angular velocities, just do some numerical integration. And also probably, if I will recall somewhere else in Fluent, you have the option to save that information. So as you see, it's very straightforward set in this case. Okay, probably at the beginning can be a little bit tricky, but then you will get used to, to that. Something very important that I want to stress a lot here is that in dynamic meshes, remember that here, okay, in our set meshes, the cells that are around that component mesh, you need to set that as passive, okay? That those cells need to be passive. Okay, so actually here, I run and it wasn't set as passive. So don't remember, uh, don't forget this one, okay? Always set that as a passive, okay? So we can run a few times that. So if you don't put those cells as passes, but it will happen that the body, you will have the morphing mesh within that body, with, within that component mesh, okay? So in this case, the body is deforming that component mesh. So in one point, it will diverge because the quality will be uh, really low. So that is your problem. Okay, we're running a few in the additional time steps. Okay, so as you see, CFL is increasing we have our nice convergence here 
and we have the we reach the five iteration. So just to show you the solution that I have pre-computed here, so this is what we have, okay? So you see that we have the two component mesh, but ground around the body. So remember, this one around the body, that region is the one that we need to assign passive, and the body, that one, we, we disable the passive action. So this is the fluent action, and look at that. Very similar behaviors, there are some differences. Remember different methods, so probably it's difficult to say which one is the best one. Probably we lean tall. I will lean towards fluent, but who knows? And what is nice also, we can check the cut planes and we can see the cutting holes also. So also we're using the same methods, okay? We're not using fluent the minimization. So see that we have the cut hole there, the cutting hole. And see that, so I press play. Okay, we have the motion there. And see that are not exactly the same, but see that there are some differences out there being computed. Personally speaking, I think that Fluent probably is more robust the what is being used to compute those holes and everything. But as you see, we, we, we have we have very similar behavior solutions. And then we can put also the area next to the body. So see here that the interpolation area, flu, uh, Fluin also will let you see those receptors and donors that we don't see here. Okay, but pretty much the same. So this is what we have, very similar behaviors. And again, this is the nice colors, but also we have some quantitative results. So I will show you also the comparison between the in the, the position of the center of math using different actions. So we have, this is the open fund solution, and then we have three fluent solutions where we change time step interpolation method. So as you see, let me hide this one. As you see, the three from fluent are very similar, different play and run with actions, okay? And then we have open fund also. As you see that there are some differences, but Let's say that they are within the acceptable tolerance. Now at this point, it's just how good is cloth enough? And then we don't know also where is the cloth enough. It has to be something in the middle or is closer to the fluent solution. So, but we have similar behaviors, okay? We check, this is the vertical position. We can check also the other displacements. Okay, so we have this one. So here probably we have larger differences but it's still there are very small values, okay, so you compute that. Okay, the other displacement, and also we can do this nice plot here, so we're plotting vertical displacement and also horizontal displacement, I think it's Y displacement. So you see the body here at the beginning is falling, similar behavior, okay, and then here is that the have those differences, but pretty much they follow similar similar trends. So this was all. Okay, so as you see, we compute two different solvers, we set up everything. Also, you may realize that they are very similar open form fluent, like the guys from open form are try, trying to get uh, very similar options to the guys from fluent, and we get similar solutions. So I think this is the, the last video. No, for overset, probably I will load uh, last one, but just a little bit best standard practice and tip of tricks. But uh, for the moment, this is all. I hope you enjoy it, and I think pretty much you you have a better idea how to set up uh, overset meshes and also how to do how, how to deal with moving bodies and greedy body motion. So thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, just thumbs down. It's up to you. But we'd really appreciate that you are subscribed to the channels and see you in the next series of videos. Bye.